Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let's learn about the client server architecture. Let us consider the example of a simple website that we saw in the previous video. This first website must have been written in some machine which has that code. So let us say we have a machine which holds the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files for some website that was created. Now next, let us consider another workstation on which we as a user is accessing the same website. So this is our client machine. So we as a client will be accessing this website using a tool called as browser. So browser window. Now the browser in order to render the website for us needs the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files in order to present it to us. But the problem here is that these files which form our website are sitting in some remote machine, right? So what can the client do in order to access these files so that the browser renders the website for us? So what we as a client need to do is to make a connection with the server, right? For that we need to make a request to the machine which holds the files that the browser running on our system needs in order to render the website. The machine which holds the files is known as the server, right? So the server has the resource in form of files that our client machine needs. So once our request hits the server, The server will respond back with the files so that the browser on our machine can run the code and render the website on the screen of our machine, right? So the server will send back a response with these files so that we can render the website in the browser. So now we are clear with the client server architecture. Let us discuss about static and dynamic websites. Static websites. So what is a static website? A static website is a website that looks the same irrespective of the user who is trying to access it. So first point is it looks the same irrespective of the user who is trying to access it. Then it is not user specific. This means that if we have multiple clients trying to access the same resource from the server, the server will serve them the same resource so that each of the clients can access the web page at the same time. Now the web pages in case of a static website are pretty much basic HTML to so basic HTML with fixed code. So it is pretty much basic HTML with fixed code for each of the web pages that it contains. So just like the website that we had seen in the previous video. Now the content that is served in case of a static website is fixed and it looks the same for each and every client that tries to access the website. Now let us talk about dynamic website. Dynamic websites. So let us take the example of twitter.com which is a social media platform. So suppose a user visits their Twitter profile then the content that they see on their feed is user specific that is specific to them right so we come to the first point that the content that we get in case of a dynamic website is user specific and not fixed so let me write this down content is user specific meaning that it is not fixed right so in other words, the content that is served to the user in case of dynamic websites is not static. So in essence, this means that dynamic websites are smart enough to serve you the content that serves your needs or you can say the content that is only relevant to you. So for the Twitter example, you can say that each user accessing the Twitter feed will have different posts that are relevant only to that user. And the interface for the web pages will be exactly the same but the content will be different for each of the users accessing that exact same web page, right? So if for example there are two users accessing their Twitter profiles, each user will be served the profile page by the Twitter servers but the difference will be that the content of profile pages 
for each user will be specific to only that user so the first user will have its own photo its own bio description and more and this will be different from the second user right so if you see the client server architecture it is clearly decoupled from each other one is the client side section and the other one is the server side section right the browser is what describes the client side of your application it doesn't care about the content of the website that it showcases you all it does is making a request to the server to fetch the relevant files that are needed to showcase the entire website to you so whatever you see that gets rendered in the browser describes the front end of your application the presentation part of the rendered content is made using html and css so this is the presentation part and the business logic element that drives the moving parts of the application is programmed using javascript plus business logic which is powered by javascript now not all the websites will have this business logic element but generally most of the event driven and dynamic applications will have this element right so dynamic websites are event driven they do have business logic and they are reactive So in essence we add functionality and behavior to our application using javascript so this is what we have in the front end okay so to sum it up front end is the part that you see in the browser and interact with so front end is basically the visual aspects visual aspects and all those interactions that you see in the browser now let us talk about the other section which is the server side section which is also known as the back end of our website back end so back end is the part which powers the front end it is basically kept abstract from the user and it mainly deals with the data part of the application and provides it to the front end so providing data to the front end now here at this end is where a couple of things can be decided for example authenticating a user so authentication then what content to show to which user then we can have storing data in the database and more so the code that we write to perform this logic at the back end side of the application is called as the back end code or the server side code so this was all i wanted to cover in this video in the next video we'll start learning about html if you like the video do give it a thumbs up or comment down below if you have any query don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the very next one